Are you debating between long-term tenants and Airbnb short-term rentals? I'm Davin Oguera. I'm a realtor and real estate investor in the LA area. I am a huge advocate for short-term rentals. You guys already know the reason. I'll explain it again at the end. But I'm going to tell you why I'm against long-term tenants. So for example, we're in LA City. If you have a tenant, and for some reason they decide to stop paying rent, you could be on the hook without receiving any income six months to a year. Even with a lawyer, it's gonna take you a while to relocate that tenant. The other disadvantage of it is if you have a tenant in place already and that tenant is not paying a good amount of rent, you can only raise that rent 3% a year. The other problem is, let's just say you have a two bedroom, one bath in the Hollywood Hills, it's got a view. You can probably get, call it five to 6,000 a month for something like that. Uh, if you Airbnb something like that, you're gonna get double. So you're talking 10 and $12,000. So it's also gonna make you less money. Now, the reason why I love short-term rentals, one, I invest in them myself. They do really well, have a lot of data on it. I can say with all the confidence in the world, it will be booked. A lot of people, when they first come to me, they're like, oh, I don't think this neighborhood is gonna make any money. I don't think this neighborhood will get a lot of guests, but you actually, you'd be surprised uh, with the areas that, really, that do really well on Airbnb. Some areas may be in like rough neighborhoods like USC area, parts of East LA where you get like seven to 10 cars parked in front of a house. You may think, okay, hey, this house is not gonna do well in Airbnb, but there's houses in these areas that are currently making 10, 10 plus thousand, which if you had a tenant there will make you 4K. A lot of question, a question that I get all the time is, is my house gonna be booked? I have data to provide to you that yes, it will be booked. I have my own houses uh, around LA that I can show you that yes, it's booked month after month after month. Just like New York, we get a lot of visitors here. So your house will be booked. It's not something to be stressed about. Last but not least, the taxes. If you opt for a long-term rental, Let's just say you paid a million bucks for your property. You're gonna have to divide that over a period of 27 years. And there's your tax savings over there, which will be around 10 to 12K per year for 27 years. Versus if you have a short-term rental, you can do something that's called cost segregation, which will accelerate the depreciation of the structure of the property. And that will save you a lot more money in your uh in your taxes so for example let's just say you bought something a million bucks you did the cost segregation study on that property because you're airbnb the property that first year it could actually save you 75 to a hundred thousand dollars in taxes it's it's a beautiful thing if you have any questions about the differences between long-term rentals and short-term rentals feel free to reach out see you guys in the next video